uh, is turned up. Uh, actually, as a respect to remember all humanitarian aid workers who died across the world and in South Sudan. Thank you. Please be cultists while striving to assist those vulnerable people who are affected by any form of disasters. This day, the World Humanitarian Day, for those of you who are interested, you want to know the background, it was first designated in 2015 by the United Nations General Assembly to coincide with the anniversary of 2003 bombing of the United Nations headquarters in Iraq, in Baghdad, where 22 aid workers were killed by terrorists. So the United Nations General Assembly said always we mark this day as a humanitarian world day. This day the World Humanitarian Day recognizes the importance of international cooperation in meeting the humanitarian needs globally. So today in South Sudan, we are marking this day because we are part of the, the world community. South Sudan, we have 1.9 million internally displaced persons in our country. Approximately 2 million people have fled to the neighboring countries that are now refugees. As we speak now, South Sudan and some parts of South Sudan are affected by drought and some parts are affected by insecurity. And all this have actually impacted negatively on the livelihoods of our people, and nearly six million people now are actually in need of humanitarian assistance. Today in our country, in South Sudan, we have 256,000 refugees, and mainly are actually from Sudan and some other countries like Ethiopia, Uganda, Congo. All these are vulnerable groups these are people who are in need, and indeed, they require humanitarian assistance. So we in the government of South Sudan, as we sit here, we do appreciate the humanitarian aid workers who work tirelessly every day to save lives of people and to ensure that required assistance reaches the people who are in need in South Sudan. That's why we are marking this day. We appreciate their role and the support that we received on behalf of our people. It is always the policy of the government of South Sudan that we provide safety and conducive working environment to all our humanitarian workers who are actually working here in the country, and we forge a good partnership. Also, we in the government, I want to assure our partners that we uh, stand for firm cooperation, for firm coordination, and we want to ensure that aid assistance that comes to our country is delivered to all our vulnerable people anywhere they are. By anywhere, we mean areas under the control of the government and the areas that are still in the pockets of the, the rebels or the opposition. So we are not discriminating. You see now, these aircraft, they move from the Juba International Airport and they go and airdrop in the areas that are controlled by the rebels. And the clearance goes from the government here. This tells you the government does not impede any access of humanitarian deliveries. Despite all these good things, all these good efforts, I must also admit 
my friends, that due to December 2013 and July 2016 crisis, and all of you are aware of this, that before that you never heard of any crisis of humanitarian uh, workers and access and all this. But because of this crisis, coupled also with uh, the spread of arms in the hands of civilians down in South Sudan, a lot of people have weapons. This has made our humanitarian partners to work under a very difficult environment, whereby they are subjected to harsh working environment, including sometimes they lose their lives and looting of their properties. This is because of these conditions. Prior to 2013, there was nothing like that in South Sudan. Everything was fine. It is this crisis whereby a lot of people got arms and a lot of people take law into their own hands and this is what is causing the situation we are talking about today. These actions, we see them as serious violations of the United Nations and the Human Rights Charters on the free movement and protection of our humanitarian workers. So, humanitarian workers are supposed to move freely, uh, but because some areas are not under our control sometimes, uh, what happened on that side, sometimes we are not responsible for them. But on the sides that we control, we are making sure and we are working with our security forces that humanitarian uh, aid must go unimpeded. The government of South Sudan is committed to embrace implementation of all United Nations and regional conventions on human rights. We are a responsible government, so all the conventions that we are party to it, we respect them and we need to embrace them and implement them. So I want to assure our partners that we are serious and this is what we have been doing on behalf of our government. And one good example of cooperation, a few months ago you heard of the, uh, the famine that was actually declared in Unity State in two counties, Mayandit and Lair. But because of our coordination and cooperation with our partners, that situation is now averted and this is a success story that we can quote. Without working together, that situation would have been a catastrophic and a lot of people would have died. But this tells you when people work together and we give access, that's why that situation is now reversed. So with this, I want to say on behalf of the government, we thank all our partners, we thank all our donors, we thank all our press and all our employees and our colleagues who are working tirelessly actually to see that humanitarian deliveries go peacefully to our people. So in this regard, I call upon all our colleagues and some people who are actually are not here with us today that we need to work together and we need to facilitate whether you are involved directly or indirectly into this humanitarian work, we want our people to, that we ensured that humanitarian aid goes to our people to, and the aid workers are not a target. This is very important. We need them. We need to work together. Thank you very much.